Welcome to the No Budget Indie Film Cast, where we dip into the independent film universe to highlight those little films that you might not have heard about elsewhere. Will you agree with our panel, or will our panel agree with each other? Tune in to find out. I am Milo Dennison, and with me, as always, are my most excellent co hosts, Claire Milan. Hello. And Kaho Fini. Hello. Okay, Claire, what are we watching this week? So this week we watched a documentary drama called Black Sheep. It's directed by a guy called Ed Perkins and it centers on, um, a, it tells a real life story about uh, Cornelius and he, when he was young in 2000, there was a really um, horrific murder on the Peckham Estate in London where Demolola Taylor was killed. So after Demolola Taylor was killed, Cornelius's mother was, frightened for him because he was also her son was also Nigerian and uh, and she's afraid he'd, he'd actually end up injured or part of a gang so she moves all the whole family to Essex and when they move to Essex which is a, a kind of a, a country part of Essex they uh, there's uh, they're the only one of the only or very few black families on this really white racist estate and Cornelius he gets involved with um with the white gangs and he he uh, yeah it, it, he kind of he ends up being part of the gang and uh, he ends up uh, changing the way he looks like he changes his 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 eye color he uses a bleach to bleach his face to make himself look more white and join in uh, yeah it was a very powerful film so what do you guys think about it. Yeah, it's amazing how you go through that period of being a, a child where really you want to fit in in a lot of ways and the stuff that you'll do to do that. Um, I agree, this is a very powerful movie. And it's it's fascinating how she the mother tried to take him from what she deemed as a bad environment and unintentionally put him into another bad environment by trying to actually be a good parent. Um, and, and, uh, and yeah, so I, I thought it was really well done too. And just a fascinating story of him just wanting to be accepted and completely changing who he is. And even the fact that like he, has, he does kind of start to get accepted by a bunch of racists as a black kid. And, they, and, and the kids treat other black kids differently than they treat him. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, it, there was an interesting, I kind of, how, how like all of the, you know, cause I live in London and it's interesting cause you hear so much about this knife violence and stuff and a lot of like these street killings and stuff like that. And so when the film started off, it was like, you know, yeah, that's totally news here all the time. And uh, that's what I thought the film was going to be about. So it was, it was so interesting to hear how it changed into that new environment and still ended up being kind of a, you know, traumatic, story for this game. Yeah, it was quite interesting because at the start I thought oh this is he, he's escaping this terrible inner city poverty and, and violence and it, it kind of happened at the start I was thinking oh where will this go now because he seems to be out of that situation and then he ends up in this estate uh, where where it, he's the only like or one of the only few black people but it, it's 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 fascinating then when, when he, he, he gets beaten up by a gang and and then he he wants to change himself, like he even straightens his hair, and the fact he he gets blue contact lenses, and and we start bleaching his face as well to make himself look a bit whiter and accept be accepted by this gang, and he he but it, what's crazy about this is, it's like he the the guy who whose life it is is talking to the camera, like he's mm -hmm. it's a really up close portrait, um it just shows him just talking to the camera and. The, the the guy behind the camera asks him one or two questions and you can feel the the guilt of what he did like he, he became when he became part of the gang he was terrorizing the neighborhood you know smashing up places he, he was even beating up you know, he bet up one guy with a bike yeah you know mm -hmm. and, and then he the guilt and then there's one very powerful scene where he him and his gang confront an um a black gang and and as you said what you just said about it, it's so weird that they call the black gang he, like the n words you know and and then they, they said oh yeah you're, you're not you know you're not that like it's just 
I thought it, it was amazing and it was fascinating as well the way Cornelius was telling his story and, and he, he told it so beautifully. You know, there's, there was some, he talked about his father as well never being there and his father being very kind of violent towards him or, or, or not, well, a bit abusive towards him yeah. and how that affected him. So it, yeah, was, it was interesting. so well told by, by Cornelius. And then the fact they mixed the drama, like reconstruction into it. And what they did was the, the, the director, he actually went out to the place where he used to live in Essex, where Cornelius used to live in Essex and found real people living in that estate. And the only actor was him as a young lad. So mm. that was fascinating, I thought. Well, as, um, yeah, it, it is, it is a, quite a fascinating story and amazing in a lot of ways. Um, but one thing that, that, uh, that, that occurred to me, um, I don't know if I'm, I'm treading in tricky ground here, but I'd say there is like um, this sort of like almost two strains of, of racism. So you have the, your basic racism where you believe that your tribe is superior to another tribe or an individual from another tribe is inferior because they're from that tribe. So that's your kind of basic entry level racism. But then I think there's another there's another type which is born from sort of a place of sort of anger and frustration and maybe disenfranchisement and marginalization or something like that. And this is kind of born out in this film. So there's there's um you probably know this the Marlon Brando film, The Wild One. Uh, he, he's the leader of a, a biker gang and his one famous scene where he's asked, what are you rebelling against? And he says, what have you got? So I, I, I think in, in this sort of environment, this is what this guy walks into, you know, as one of the only black families. And he becomes he becomes an easy target for them uh, because of the colour of his skin. And and these, this gang, you know, there's, there's so much history there of you know, racism and discrimination particularly against black people. So they have a lot of sort of uh, ammunition to use and they use it. And, you know, this, this kind of racism is, can easily be, is easily whipped up by authorities and bad actors to create sort of division and hatred. And we see that uh, played out with the likes of Brexit in the UK and Trumpism in, uh, in America. Like, and, and, it's, and it's really toxic, but ultimately, he he becomes one of them. He inveigles his way into their gang, and if if there was, you know, if there was a fundamental core belief on their behalf that he was he was so inferior, he was so so much of a pride that way he never have been allowed to do that, you know. So you know, he 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 becomes the same as them in a lot of ways, and he starts to behave the same way as them, you know. And and he he expresses his anger, the anger that he feels from. That's come from his background, his lifestyle, and he expresses it in the same way as them with, anger, with violence, you know, and antisocial behavior. Um, so you know, it, it does kind of blur the lines a bit. I think, you know, who knows what sort of what's going on in their background, therefore causes them them to behave the way they behave. So uh, you know, it, it is, but it's it's still, it you know, still it's still a fascinating story. You know? Yeah, and there is a lot of. Because, yeah, it could, it, I mean, obviously there's a lot of racism in this, in, in the way those kids act, but it could just as easily have been, you know, kids from another neighborhood that they would be insulting and calling names uh, for any number of reason, just because of that. Yeah, there's a certain hostility towards anything that's different or anyone that's different in any way, and uh, that just kind of feeds on itself. And you get these social groups where maybe you have one or to kind of, uh, you know, more dominant people and everybody else just kind of follows along with that. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's just an amazing, so much hatred. I, I, and I got this from this film too. I'm like, as I was watching it, I'm like, why does everybody hate everybody so much in this planet? Like for as long as we've been around with as much as like, uh, you know, people traveling and meeting other people from different countries and, and they're still, just like you mentioned, the, the Brexit thing and the Trumpism in the U.S. Yeah. In the modern world, it doesn't change. Um, 
I, I, you know, I remember seeing when I lived in Dublin city center, seeing kids like this and, you know, and yelling and throwing stuff at people that walk past them just, just for the sake of like, you know, being, you know, causing trouble. And you well, see, I'd say, yeah. I'd say, I'd say at, a, at a basic level, like it, it's, it's, you could probably point to poverty, you know, and deprivation. Yeah. Like, you know, people, people, you know, they, they're angry against society and they just want to lash out, you know. And this, this is, this is, this is, you know, how, how that's expressed. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. it comes from a place of anger, like, and, and with, with, uh, with Cornelius, his, he didn't, his father wasn't there. And it's interesting, his mother wants to take him out of a, she, like a really horrible inner city London estate and she put him in a, a place that was nearly worse. Yeah. You know, so which, but it, it, it's so horrible for the mothers of some, some of these kids because they, they want the best for their children. And then mm. you can see how kids get involved in gangs. Like I see it all over Dublin. I, I know London as well, you probably see it. But yeah. particularly Dublin, because it's quite small, you see these kids everywhere. And they, you, you wonder what type of backgrounds they came from and, and how they end up like that. You know? and, and they're not going to have a happy future. Yeah, they're going to end up in prison or worse. So it, well, and the thing was that a lot of the gangs too, like just from what I know, I'm not an expert, but from what I know, a lot of it just has to do with that's where you live and you're either in the gang and you're not getting the crap kicked out of you or you're out of the game, gang and the gang members are kicking the crap out of you. So mm -hmm. it's kind of one of those join or, you know, like what happened with Cornelius. Yeah, you know, I thought that was fascinating. You got beat up until yeah. you join the game. Yeah, and it was like, I've never seen, I've rarely seen this side of it, of being a gang member. Like, he's joining it to prevent them attacking him. I never mm -hmm. thought about that perspective. So, so that, was, that, was, that was fascinating. It, it was, yeah. and it's like, in order for him to survive, in order for him to, to live, like, to actually get up every day and, and have something to live for, in a, but not in a very nice way, in a very destructive way. He had to join the gang to survive. Was, um, and, and, it, and, it, and it shows how people in sort of totalitarian societies can easily be controlled mm -hmm. because he, he probably felt as an individual he was too insignificant, too weak to be able to affect change. So he had to adapt. So, you know, you, you adapt or die. And he became, he became the thing that he hated in a way. And you can see that with like say with communism in East, East Europe for, for, you know, six decades that the same people that were, that were the communists when it collapsed, they just overnight, they, they became, you know, the politicians, democratic politicians and, and business people. So you, you know, it, it's, a, it's a matter of sort of adapting yourself to, to survive really. But you know as well, I must say, this is nominated for um, a short documentary Oscar in 2019. But what elevates this story is number one is that Cornelius, the, the main guy, he is, he's able to tell his story so well. And I'm not sure if the director worked with him on a certain script, but it looks, it was very in the moment and very raw. And he, when he was asked a particular moment when, about him beating up a guy on a bike and the, the, by the, the director asked him, do, do you kind of have remorse, do you regret it? And he didn't say straight away, he did, Do you know, and it was a nice part, there was kind of a pause and you could see some, so much pain in Cornelius's face and the way they, they framed it, he, he was a really kind of up close shot of just him and the emotions and interspersed with the, the drama, with the, the dramatic footage and there was music as well as added to it, but it was so well produced that it, it, it is a long film, 24 minutes, but I didn't feel 24 minutes gone by because some of these short films in the, with 24 minutes you feel like they're not going forever but with this it went by so quick and I was so engrossed in it it, it was very very powerful yeah absolutely and yeah, I thought no, go ahead, go ahead, no, go I was just saying you're, you're absolutely right the way this was shot does add so much to it with that balance of just that single still sh that shot of him talking directly to the you know in and then cut to the um, the other scenes, it's 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 just it's simple, but really well done. And and I liked as well some of the scenes as as is evident in Claire's background there, where he impose you know he imposed himself in the scene as he is now looking at himself 
as he was then, you know. But that was good. That was a nice little tactic. But um, I thought I think another um, theme that was kind of just barely kind of switched on was the idea of uh, toxic masculinity, maybe, because he he felt first time he got beaten up that he that he couldn't appear weak in front of his dad. He couldn't say to his dad he was beaten up because his dad, like he was a proud man, he was a a lion, as he said himself. And he couldn't express his feelings to him. And in the end, he internalized them in a very unhealthy way. Yeah, exactly. Like, imagine if he could talk it out with his father. Think about mm. like what he probably wouldn't have joined the gang then. You know, mm. if he just opened up to to anyone. But but mm. a lot of this is it's pent up emotion. It's like mm. these people don't feel like they can talk or share or show how they're truly feeling. So they they get they get so frustrated and angry, and then they they do like a kettle, you know, about to boil or blow its lids, you know. It, it's so then they 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 act out, and yeah, it, it's it's crazy. Mm. All right. Well, should we rate it? Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, I'll go first this week. Go on, go okay. Because <laughs> I haven't I haven't even thought about it. Um, yeah, well, this is this is uh, this is this is the second documentary we've reviewed this season, um, and I'm not sure what I gave the other one. Like it's a, uh, yeah, it's 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 just a it's just an amazing story, uh, and it was the way they told it, like the kind of the guy to camera and then sort of flashbacks. It was, and it was the second time I'd seen it, and as you say, you didn't feel the time going, you know. Um, uh, so I would give it four and a half. Mm. But for me, it is when I sat down earlier to watch it, 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 it's one of the most powerful documentaries I've seen. It was so well told, so well narrated, and, and with a really powerful message. So I think I'll have to give it five stars because I, I can't fault it at all. And it left a huge impression with me. Yeah. I'm in the same boat. I was leaning towards a four, but then I was really thinking about it. And I'm like, why not give it a five? Because there's really no reason that it's not a top quality film. Um, so I could go four and a half like Cahal, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go five. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, there's nothing I can fault it. It was really well done. The story the you know, it has that emotional impact that you get need from a documentary. Um, you know, get you talking and think about it. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go five stars as well. Yeah, I think it's the highest right. scoring film. One the highest, anyway. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, well, there you have it. No budget audience. We loved this film, so we would highly recommend that you check it out. It's called Black Sheep. As always, you can let us know what you think via our social media channels, which are at No Budget Show on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. And uh, if you enjoy this show, be sure to leave us a comment or a review, share it with your friends. And with that, we will say stay tuned to see what we're watching next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.